This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Every year, I make a progressively more elaborate Halloween costume. It all started in 2021 when I fell down a costume rabbit hole and made this witch costume. And the stakes were up last year whenever I sacrificed at least 12 pool noodles to make some arachnid couture. Which was also probably the weirdest thing I've ever made. This is probably the weirdest thing that I've ever made. Which begs the question, how will Halloween power creep ruin my sleep schedule this October? Naturally, I took to YouTube, Instagram, and Patreon to ask you all what I should make, but it was no use. Weeks went by without a drop of inspiration until one faded afternoon whenever I was accosted by this comment and finally found my muse. Ladies with swords. So when it comes to Halloween armor, I have some similar concerns to whenever I was working on my Halloween scythe. The concerns being, how do you make Halloween armor without it just looking real stupid? So it took me a while to figure out, but I think I finally got something that isn't stupid. So what I basically decided on is this. I know it's a lot. Listen, I know, I know. Just trust the process. So we basically have a full set of torso armor here, pumpkin pauldrons, a breastplate that leads into a corset, some hip armor, the legs mostly bare for mobility purposes, not that any of this is at all realistic, and then a giant hoop skirt type situation, very much inspired by like Saber from Fate Stay Night. Just that whole idea of a chivalrous lady knight who has a big skirt, but can still, you know, cut you. Very impractical giant bat wings. And then I'm thinking a bat, face piece headpiece of some kind. So for inspirations, my Pinterest board is very much covered in like medieval revival for this for whatever reason. I don't know, it's just an aesthetic that I became obsessed with this summer. In addition to that, also very much inspired by like vintage 1930s Halloween. That's where a lot of like the kitschy over the top references and influences come into this overall design. And finally, I have also been very much inspired by different like fey leaf skirt run fair looks for this whole thing. That's where the leaf skirt is coming into this. As you can probably tell, I'm just a little bit obsessed with autumn leaves. So I also really want that to come across in this design. And of course, every knight needs a weapon, and while I could go for the quintessential sword and shield, I felt like it was just a little bit more Halloween-y to go for a scythe, which I have already made. There's a video about that already up because I wasn't doing all that in one week. With the design basically figured out, I think it's time to get started. Hi there, and welcome to the first formal day of this insane project. That's not my cat. You gonna stop eating my hair now? It is September 18th, so I have just over a month to get this done, and I am starting earlier than I did last year. So in my book, that is an accomplishment. I got up for like half a second and he took my chair. So I think the way to play this is just to start on something so I can get a little bit of progress done while I have the time. So I think what I'm gonna begin with are the pauldrons and the mask because I feel like those are pieces that are a little bit smaller and I actually have them planned out. So for the pumpkin pauldrons and the mask, I figured I could throw together a pattern myself easily enough, but I also have like a month or so to do this. So I figured why do that whenever there's lovely folks on Etsy who have already done it and I can just download those and immediately start using them. So that's what I did. draft of the pumpkin pauldrons and I'm a little bit nervous because 
pants. I feel like they may have turned out a little bit too big. I feel like a large shape is what I'm going for, so I'm just not sure. The shape itself I think is really good, but is it too much? Like, is it cute or does it look like I cut a pumpkin in half and put it on my shoulders? That is one thing that I am really not good at determining by myself. So I think I'm gonna put these to a vote on my Patreon and see what people who have better judgment than I do as to what is too much think of this. <laughs> Should we try it with the crinoline? <sighs> this is actually my first time trying this on. Wow, you look beautiful. Yeah, can you show some ankle real quick? A little bit. Oh! <sighs> this is something else, isn't it? I feel like Princess Peach or something along those lines. This is definitely not my natural state. Oh no, a mosquito is biting me underneath this crinoline and I can't get to it to scratch it. Okay, now maybe that the rest of me looks like a pumpkin. This will look a little bit more right. Wow. If all of me looks like a pumpkin, is it weird to have giant pumpkins on my shoulders? The patrons actually said they were fine, so I guess this is what we're rolling with. At least let's pretend that's what we decided on because I had indeed not decided on anything and remade them smaller, becoming increasingly conflicted with my rival arm gourds. Here is the mask base so far. Is it a bat mask? Is it a cat mask? I don't really know. I might decide on a firm direction later on, or I might just leave it a little bit more ambiguous. I'm definitely going to sculpt and add on to this, but this is a great base to start with, and I'm glad something is going well right off the bat because I'm still being indecisive about my pumpkins. Honestly, the amount of gourd deliberation I did over the course of this video was the spookiest thing I experienced all season. Hey, you know what's really terrifying? The idea of your beautiful artwork and designs going completely overlooked by potential viewers who would wish to be hold them or buyers who would give you coin to own them. Avoid your work sinking away into obscurity in the night like an apparition in a lonely graveyard with this video's sponsor Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for websites, portfolios, e-commerce, marketing, and brand analytics. I host both my illustration and costume design portfolios on Squarespace and they make it super easy to create two portfolios in one place. They have professionally designed, fully customizable templates to help you get your site started and website building features like automatic image scaling to help you set up your portfolio in seconds by arranging your gallery of images for you. I really like how customizable it is so that you can really craft a website that communicates your personality and brand to your audience. And you don't even have to be particularly good at graphic design. Uh, I know I'm not. On top of all that, if you have wares to sell, Squarespace's e-commerce platform has basically every feature you could possibly need to sell your products. And with email campaigns and extensive website analytics, they also have powerful marketing tools to help you grow a loyal client base. So if you would like to grow an internet presence that haunts the earth eternally, even years after your death, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to take 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Anyways, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to it. Next, because it was the second least intimidating thing on my list, it was skirt time. Like I said, the skirt is one of these fairy core style leaf skirts, very much inspired by Rachel Maxey's leaf dress and Winnie from Breath Design's leaf skirt, but with a big old ball gown shape to balance out my gourds. For this skirt, first I needed a ton of fabric. I gathered a lot of this thrifting over the course of a few months, but one day I also just went to the thrift store next to my house and hit an absolute gold mine. Like, they didn't have this many textiles last time I was there, and I was in heaven. Ten dollars. Ten dollars for all of this. I hit a jackpot. I may have bought too much stuff, but this will also probably supply fabric for projects for like the next six months, so I can have a giant pile of fabric as a tree. Anyways, first we need some base skirts. Do you guys want to know my number one circle skirt life hack? All you got to do is go to the thrift store, find a tablecloth, that has finished edges. It can be a circle. That works a little bit better if you're making a circle skirt. It can also be just like a giant rectangle. You can do a napkin hem. It doesn't really matter, but watch this. You just gotta fold that sucker in fourths, like so. Then you just do the circle skirt waist circumference formula. I'll have that on screen, but I already have mine memorized because this is the only skirt I ever make. Where'd my scissors go? Those are gonna be my famous last words, probably. You just measure and cut out your waist radius, but I do it on the corner so that it saves time and it's easy. Then whip up a quick waistband and you've got a super simple Ren Faire skirt situation. I love this method because for me, it eliminates the most annoying part of making a circle skirt, which is finishing the bottom hem. With this, you don't have to do that. You just have to make a waistband and that's it. You're done. I cut mine down the middle so that they're open in the front, but there you go. The base of the skirt, that easy. Just had to give my scissors a little snack. And there's some rough edges here, but it's rustic. 
I'm not gonna worry about the finishing work. It is a crusty skirt. Intentionally. And speaking of crusty. I'm about to make my fabrics really messy by putting them on my garage floor. But I did do this for a reason. To avoid fraying, I tried to cut a bunch of these with my wood burning tool. It's a hack I got from Wendy that looked too handy and chaotic not to try. Unfortunately, it wasn't hot enough to cut all of my fabrics, but it did cut the ones that could have frayed a lot. So worth it. Also, I get to use fire. So once I got those cut, I took them outside for a quick once over with the airbrush. I wanted to add a little bit of leaf vein shading to fully get the idea across. This is also something that everyone else does whenever they make their leaf skirts. So I had to try it. And well, yet another cat has forced themselves into this video. Since he was around, I asked him if he wanted to model a little cape, and he happily obliged. Once I had pro cat enough, make sure to unsubscribe below, I pinned some bias tape to the underskirt and sewed it up so I could tie it on like a petticoat for some more of that sweet versatility. And I pinned the leaves onto a separate waistband, which was finished with a couple of grommets so it can be laced at my waist or hips. So earlier I was deliberating about whether or not to cut this down the front or what to do about the whole fact that the skirt is open on my design. And I just tried it on with like the black overskirt and all of my little skirt pieces and Turns out, I don't know if I even have to make that decision because number one, I did try to cut through this and I thought that this boning or whatever you want to call it was plastic. It's metal. I could try to force it, but I don't know if I want to do that or not. The other fun thing that I discovered upon trying all of the pieces on is that they are entirely too heavy for this hoop skirt. Oh God, this is bad. I feel like that thick robot from the robots movie with you and McGregor. Oh no, guys. Oh no. For all the metal involved here, it just bows all the way to the front and it just, which even if I don't cut it down the front, definitely not what I'm looking for here. One of these is made for much lighter weight fabrics than what I have here, which is essentially like, you know, four tablecloths sewn together. I think currently that's gonna be a back burner problem. If nothing else, I'm probably just gonna wear the skirts by themselves. Should be fine. Hi. Oh, we have a baby. <laughs> if I can workshop something, I will probably do so. I just can't think of anything. Sometimes you just gotta be adaptable. You gotta roll with the punches. You gotta- Sometimes you also have to dodge the tiny little knives of your cat because she really likes hiding under your hoop skirt for whatever reason. So after all of this, the solution to my skirt problem that emerged was to get my buddy Gamble. <laughs> yep, that Gamble. To come over with his angle grinder and cutting meal attachment and cut through those skirt hoop bone things. And after that, it actually kind of worked with all my pieces and didn't look half bad. So if there's one thing that I've learned in my 25 years of life, it's that power tools are almost always the solution. All right, it is finally time to begin working on the breastplate because I've been putting this off for entirely too long. It's already almost the last week of October, so that's not good. But to begin patterning this out, I have to do the thing where I wrap myself in duct tape and saran wrap. So let's do that. All right, I have been encased in my masking tape cocoon. Indisposed. She's in a cocoon. I gotta draw the pattern on. Okay, it got dark, but here is the pattern. I've basically got it broken down to be breastplate, and then I'm gonna have like a corset section here, which is gonna go into the like hip thigh armor. I've also padded out the hip so that I have enough room for all of my skirt, and done the same thing with the back so that it flares out. And I've only done that on one side so that I can mirror it and everything. So I think this is looking pretty good, but I do need to add the rest of the hip armor. So let's do that. So because I like to use poster board as the base layer for shaping Morbla, I transferred my pattern pieces onto some of that and it also gave me the opportunity to exaggerate my silhouette a little bit more. I added a bit more room to the breastplate and hips and tried to make sure everything looked well balanced. I feel like whenever you're making cartoony style armor, the exaggerated nature of the design really lends itself to a very exaggerated silhouette. So taking the time to really get that right here was super important. Now that we have functional patterns, it is bean time. It's the only way my Morbla stays Flat. You know the drill from there, it's just cutting out a bunch of warbler pieces, melting them around my poster board, and then melting my poster board pieces together, which is a step that never fails to make me want whole grain pasta. It's like a whole freaking lasagna up in here. I also took this opportunity to add lacing holes to the corset and breastplate. I bulked out the chest a little bit with some foam clay, which was, um, 
an experience. Definitely one of the more intimate activities I've had to do on the channel, rubbing down the bust of an armor mold of yourself. And remember how we said this? I do need to add the rest of the hip armor. Well, I didn't film it. Here they are. This is what those pieces look like. I cut these pieces out of EVA foam to save on Warbla and therefore save my wallet from cardiac arrest. And along the way, some bracers also somehow happened, as well as some little hand pieces. They all just showed up. I don't know how. Maybe it's haunted. Maybe a ghost is finishing this cosplay for me. Ah, oh, man, I shouldn't even joke about that. That'd be so nice. That night, I also attempted to sculpt a bat face onto my mask in an effort to try to achieve this energy. <laughs> it did not achieve that energy. Whenever this was drying, I just placed it flat on a table like this. And with foam clay, whenever you make things dry like that, they just kind of smush into themselves. Now this, I will blame on the ghosts. I didn't do this. I didn't make something that bad. Piss off, ghost! All of my armor is basically done. Everything's cut out. So the thing I'm going to do to finish this up before I start painting is going in with my Dremel and my little wood burning tool and adding all of the designs and the details. But for that, first, I need to cover this in a thin layer of foam so that I can actually carve in some details. The way I'm going to do that is just by covering both this and the corset piece in some masking tape so that I can draw on a pattern for my foam, transfer that to some foam so that I can then add a little bit of barge cement and glue my foam onto the breastplate and the corset. Similar to the way that I do all of my like fake bark and my little designs on corsets like that, I can then go in with my wood burning tool and carve all of my leaf designs on here. And whatever else I come up with, I'm kind of open to different ideas. I'm gonna experiment a little bit. Part for me is also like, I need to meld all of these concepts together just a little bit more. And that I did. I began by cutting out a bunch of leaves to use in various places. One became the focal point on the design for my corset. I also patterned out a nice leafy high collar for my breastplate per my design. Design, and I think I lost some footage of this, but here it is. I also glued that on and check that out. It's looking pretty snazzy. The rest of this day consisted of the most random assortment of tasks possible. I sketched out a bunch of designs on my breastplate, bracers, corset, and hip armor pieces, and my arms were feeling a little naked, so I made some bicep armor and stuck some leaves on those, cut some foam dowels to use as a base for some pumpkin stems, and sculpted those with some foam clay under the watchful eye of the executive producer. Is that not the cutest executive producer? you've ever seen. Like, there's no contest here. I also dremeled all of the rough edges on my pumpkins and sealed the seams with quick seal. I did a disheveled try-on of all of my armor pieces and even impulsively began carving in some of the details on a couple of my pieces, but saved most of the work for the following day. designs like these always takes a hot minute, um, no pun intended, but I really love the results. This is basically my stand-in for faking leather until I build up the nerve to take the financial plunge of learning how to work with real leather, especially with little detailed designs. But this method is a lot of fun and pretty dang inexpensive. The variety of wood burning tips I also had to help me to get a good bit of detail, which definitely helped with little veins on the leaves. And the calligraphy tip also came in handy for making a bunch of the borders. While I was at it, I also drew out my pumpkin faces, which I intentionally made sisters not twins, heck, maybe even third cousins, and I carved them out with my X-Acto blade and cleaned them up a bit with my Dremel. And unfortunately, these might be the only pumpkins I get to carve this year because I still haven't carved mine. Look at him, all lonely and faceless. Also, for those curious, I did do a photo shoot of Ellie in her witch costume at the pumpkin patch, and I wore different witchy pieces too, and it was extremely cute. 10 out of 10 Halloween activity. Now, where were we? I think we're gluing leaves and stems onto our pumpkin pauldrons, meaning we're finally done with the bases of our armor? So today I am going to work on my bat wings. Was gonna try to make them poseable with PVC and like have an articulation thing going on, but whenever I look at the size and scale of them in my design, I just don't know how necessary that is. So I think instead I'm just going to use some good old EVA foam and some galvanized wire and basically do a miniature version of the bat wings that I did on my little polymer clay bat here. I think that should simplify this process a lot more, make them a little bit more appealing, and then at a later date I will probably make some proper articulation 
articulating wings. Let's do it. <laughs> I began my bat wings by taking some general proportional measurements to make sure I got them pretty close to the size of the illustration. And then I very roughly drew out my shape using my two strongest skills, decent approximation, and vast amounts of unearned confidence. I then cut them out using the measure once, cut once method, and a whole lot of beans for emotional support. Beans. To give them a little structure on my back because the foam was pretty floppy, I heated and bent some half-inch PVC to match the wing shape. I used twisted pieces of galvanized wire secured with hot glue to support the rest of the wings, and I lost a little footage here, but the wings were secured together with a good bit of warbler to keep them nice and sturdy. I added some quick straps, and this is what they were looking like so far. And obviously, as is the case with any ridiculous gangly item, we must perform a goblin, goblin test. A goblin test is defined as a set of vigorous or chaotic movements used to verify if a prop can withstand the goblin-like way in which I move whenever I'm in heavy costume. This goblin test involved me scuttering around my driveway like a gargoyle to make sure the wing straps actually held up to heavier use. And obviously, watching this footage back is absolutely hilarious. It makes me want to load it onto an unmarked SD card and like leave it in a Walmart parking lot for some unsuspecting weirdo to find. The next day, it was time to cover some of that PVC hot glue messiness up with a little foam clay. I didn't have a ton of time to agonize over detail here, so I wasn't too picky about how I did this, especially since foam clay tends to dry in a pretty forgiving way. I just covered all of the exposed structural bits with a layer and blended out with a bunch of water, and that served my purposes just fine. They have some pretty good movement to them, and speaking of movement, here's more of that nonsense. <laughs> to finish up the detail and avoid long foam clay drying times, I did some hot glue lines on the other side, and also burned some holes into the wings because I also intend to wear these as dragon wings with my dragon corset set. Can you feel me just capitalizing on the versatility of everything I make? And with the skirt, I love it. Oh my gosh. It is coming together. I was kind of skeptical about the wings at first, but I'm so glad that I did them like with the wings, this just, you know, I think it adds way more drama. I love feeling like a bat. I don't know what else to say. I feel like a gargoyle perched on the ledge of a building. <laughs> Well, this has taken a very long time. I'm not at all surprised because this is a lot of armor, but <laughs> we are finally ready to get into the painting stage. Oh, and you guys know that this is my favorite part of a project. This is the part where I can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. And mind you, I'm still working on how to attach these gauntlets. No pauldrons to my body. <laughs> I'm hoping to finish the paint job up today. It's an unrealistic goal. It really is. But I don't really have a choice. So let's do it. energy I'm giving off right now is a perfect mixture between Bella and Charlie Swan. You know what I mean? You nicknamed my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster! Anyways, it is finally time to start. Airbrushing. As you saw, I took a rather interesting strategy to priming these. I tend to prime things with black paint so that I have less detailing to do. Like if there's a little crevice that I couldn't quite get into, I don't have to go back into it with, you know, a darker paint later. I just make sure that all the little cracks and crevices definitely have dark paint in them. So I don't have to do that myself because I've had to do that before in the past. I don't like it. Since my airbrush paints are like a little bit transparent, I like to go in on top of the black paint and do more of a gray or neutral color primer to lift the base coat so that whenever I put those slightly transparent paints on, they still show through and they're still decently opaque. And then I have also gone in with an orange spray paint and given my pumpkins a base coat of that just to make sure they're saturated enough and vibrant enough because like I said, my airbrush colors are a little bit transparent and I touch the paint. Didn't mean to do that. So this should hopefully give me the kind of base I'm looking for so that I can go in with hand brushes, do all of the final details with that. I'm actually a really big fan of the results so far. It's starting to look like a costume, which is really good. There's a lot of conflicting shapes going on here. There's a roundness, there's pointedness. Uh, whenever I designed this, I was just kind of going for it. And whenever I do that, it normally turns out good. 
but sometimes it doesn't. So I'm glad that my unearned confidence is paying off once again. Let's see how long we can ride this way. So first I'm gonna go in here and basically give everything a layer of brown to just bring in a little bit of tonality so it's just not all grayscale. Especially because I think that brown will be a good base to work from whenever I go in with brushes. I think that'll do the trick. at least. I am not done with the whole paint job yet. We still have a ways to go with that, so time to go to brushes. With the hand painting, I was mostly concerned with highlighting the carvings on the armor, really trying to make sure all the pumpkins and leaves were visible and had good detail, and the executive producer was concerned about being on my lap at all times. I had to get up a lot whenever I was doing this and I felt so bad. I'm so sorry. Overall, I just did a lot of dry brushing and highlighting the top or bottom of an area with a pop of color. Nothing too crazy, but with this much armor, it still took a while. And I have to say the only thing preserving my will to keep working this late was the Buffy binge watch me and my brother were on. But I persevered through adding gold leaf to all the edges and little silicone mold details. Wait. I'll back it in there. With the help of my emotional support cat, I made it through the majority of the paint job and afterwards probably looked something like this. Hello and welcome to the final day! Well friends, against all odds, I actually managed to finish up the paint job last night. I do not know how we did it. I'm not gonna mention how much time it took to do it, but check it out! I'm really happy with it. Um, admittedly, this is one of the most time consuming and complicated paint jobs I've ever done. And even then, I kind of went the conservative route with the detail because I just didn't have time. There's so many pieces to this. <sighs> it is so good to be on the home stretch of this project. Today there's just a couple things that I need to go in and finish. I still haven't quite done anything about that mask. Oh no, God. That needs to be rectified very soon. <laughs> did find this picture on Pinterest the other day because I was looking for new mask inspiration because what I had just like wasn't working. I don't think it blends with the rest of the costume very well. So I am thinking about sculpting something very similar to this vintage bat mask that I found. I don't think it would be too difficult. I think I could do it pretty quick. So if I have time, that is what I will do. Let's finish up a couple of things and then show off this whole baby in action. Let's go. Against all odds, I did get a little time to go in and rework the mask. I just cut the base down to this and sculpted something kind of similar to the reference on top of it, and I think it came out pretty cute. I also did go back in and add a little bit more detail to the paint job because I am ridiculous, and apparently I hadn't spent enough hours on it already. I just added a dark wash to all of the pieces to give them a little bit more depth and tweaked the overall paint job a little bit, and this was followed up with two layers of satin clear coat to seal my paint job and give everything a nice vibrant finish. And then I went in super fast the literal hours before filming the reveal, adding rivets and elastic and ties and velcro to everything. I also attached the pauldrons to the breastplate and also added LEDs to the pumpkins off camera right before I left to go to my location shoot because we are cutting it just that close. Here I am being stupid in the car on the way there. Very mature stuff. And with that, this month long endeavor is finally complete. <laughs>
watching. This video is always so much work every year, but it's always so rewarding. I hope this brought you some inspiration some coziness, maybe a little bit of Halloween cheer, even though it's like the week after. Anyways, that being said, if you want more spooky Halloween content, I have so much of it. There's a whole playlist available. I'll link that below. I also uploaded a Halloween painting video last week, which was a whole entire thing. I had to re-upload it, so it's performing pretty bad, which sucks because at first it was performing just fine. <laughs> so if you want something else to watch, I recommend giving that a watch because I had a lot of fun making it and I'm sad that not as many people got to see it. In addition to all of that, I want to extend a huge, huge thank you to all of my patrons this season. You guys have been funding these projects because, oh baby, let me tell you, none of this stuff was cheap. So all of that is made possible by my beautiful, wonderful, amazing patrons. Thank you to everyone who also signed up and subscribed to see like work in progress photos. It's just been kind of popping off over there. So thank you so much. Here it is, another Halloween project for the books. I'm already thinking about next year, which is very dangerous. Finally, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for being here with me this season. If you want to subscribe, I would definitely appreciate it. Because <laughs> this was a lot of work. <laughs> thank you to everyone who does that and likes and has watched with me this season. But of course, as always, the biggest thank you goes to my amazing patrons and especially my executive producers. Rest easy. Lirael? Liana? Armler Jean, Anubix, Breeza, Elizabeth Smith, Bean the Bread, I Hang Out with Cats at Parties, Bobo McFoe, Freya Wolf, Gravity Drop, Sweet Winter Garden, Katie, Hypnos, India Gloom, Enozine, Megan Penland, Meeks Hunter, Eloquent Silence, Low Visa, Thea Maia, Agent Dot Sketchy, The Cat's Bark, Alowen Hayes, Shay Lee, Zyle S, Dodo, Cat, Small Underscore Creeper, Francesca Sliwa, Freedom and Gus Gus, Sam Alama Ding Dong, Rose Kofrick, Rose Jaconai, Phoenix, Brian, the cat buses early, and Miss Wicked. So my crinoline started clawing at me, which, you know, I thought was a little strange. There it is, the culprit. Not from under there, mommy's busy. Mommy's busy. <laughs> There we go, good girl. She literally just went back under there right after I escorted her out. Hello.